everybody and welcome to this little chat. I am so excited to have my friend Marlene on this uh, video because she gave me such inspiration for my new book. And I'm also very excited because I got a copy today. <laughs> everybody else has been reading my book and I hadn't even seen it. So thank you to Amazon because mine arrived yesterday. And I wanted to share with you um, her insight about empath. And I'm going to read to you from the book. If um, Hold on while I put my glasses on. Um, if you're following along, it's on page 165 in my new book, Very Well. You can see it there. And I'm just going to read one page and then we're going to talk about it. So at the top of the page, it says, I do find myself wanting to fix them, to help them out of their misery. If they could just see that their suffering is coming from their thoughts about their bodies or their partners or whatever, they could be so much calmer. Sure, it's natural to help to want to help people. You are a natural helper. Have you heard the term empath? Yes, but I thought you hated labels and all that psychobabble stuff. Deborah laughed again. I do, but it's good to know why it doesn't make any sense. I hated the word triggered for a long time, but couldn't put my finger on why until I saw it was a very outside in way of blaming others for how we feel. Oh, she triggered me or that movie triggered me. Nothing on the outside can ever make us feel anything. It's always our thinking about it. The word empath has taken on a whole new meaning for me recently too, continued Deborah. Empathy is a noun. Being empathetic is an adjective. But in psychobabble language, being an empath has become a thing, a person. We love to thingify stuff. I was talking to one of my clients, who is Marlene, <laughs> um, <laughs> And her insight about this really helped me to see the misunderstanding. Deborah showed Helen a text on her phone. I do not feel other people's pain. I feel my thoughts about other people's pain. I feel my thoughts that I feel other people's pain. I feel the thought that I'm taking on other people's pain. I feel the thought that I could make other people's pain bearable by taking it over. I feel the thought that people in pain feel better because I take over their pain. Wow, replied Helen. That turns the whole empath thing upside down. So I'm so excited we get to talk about this today. So yeah, um, we were just trying to remember when we had this conversation. So it was about two years ago. Is that right? Mm. Let me think again. <laughs> when did I the, the your pain uh, course? That was last year, I think, at um, the beginning of the year. So it yes. was like one and a half year ago around that so right. yeah when I read your book mm -hmm. yeah so it, the, my, the previous book right I came up with the with this insight where did it come from for you so maybe I have to kind of contextualize it so I uh, my first profession is a nurse so mm -hmm. I'm a trained nurse and uh at that time I no a little bit before I, I had quit my job at a, a day clinic for a multiple sclerosis patient. Uh -huh. So, and during that time, I had really often or like sometimes felt um, symptoms similar to my patients. Oh, wow. Start to think, oh, do I have the same? Like, and, uh, but it was not really quite the same and I also had thoughts on oh maybe they feel something and misinterpret like they think it's 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 a symptom caused by multiple sclerosis but actually it's something else oh. so I had kind of an open relationship to to that what was happening but still mm -hmm. had a strong had had a, like came up with the idea, maybe I'm so empathic, like I'm an empath, that's pain. So, and that is what I'm feeling, like parts of their problems, parts of their symptoms I'm feeling. And as I experienced that I, that people love to be around me or were happy when I was there, I thought maybe they feel better because I'm taking on their pain. Mm. <laughs> so... And 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 it was but it was also kind of stressful because i wasn't feeling really good like and i had of course thoughts on this thinking about this and became uh, fully self employed mm -hmm. and then i still sometimes had had like 
symptoms, symptoms like this and I read your book, became more familiar with the idea that really pain and stuff can is like um can be a result or is a result of our thinking. Mm -hmm. And one day, you know, magic happens and you have an insight. <laughs> <laughs> So I suddenly saw, wow, I really, I just think I'm taking on other people's pain. I think I can feel their pain. Yeah. It was just, and then it was gone. It was like gone completely. You know, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking how amazing this would be for people, you know, like nurses and social workers and people in the helping professions, because we we tend to take on so much, mm -hmm. you know, when you're, you know, listening or caring for people all day who are suffering, mm -hmm. um, sometimes physically, sometimes emotionally, that to take that all on is so heavy. And it's, you know, it can be a real burden for some people, which is why there's a lot of it burnout in, in those kind of helping professions. And the burnout I can see is coming from um, the misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. And I, I love what you're saying about the insight just kind of, you know, change that all. Mm -hmm. So so tell us a little bit about how how you see it now. Like, how did it change it for you? I mean, I, 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 I can't even say what, what all completely. I mean, it changed completely for me. But I see, I, I kind of see more clear where, where it had coming from. Mm. like this this idea to take over other people's pain i think it's it was something uh, i don't i i know we don't uh, talk about childhood but i feel that i developed the idea that this is a good idea to do like to take over other people's pain or to be really to really know what's going on with other people or to know what their wishes are their desires and to really like be very um quick by answering the desires or fulfill the desires mm -hmm. so in it was helpful a lot of times i mean when when you are with patient who are a patient who can't talk yeah. can't speak it's really helpful if you have like antennas like this yeah. but but it's as you said it becomes a burden if you think that's really what's happening because I see today, I see something mm -hmm. um, and I interpret that yeah. and then I do it. And often it matches. It It's a match, you know, but yeah. really what it really is, it's an interpretation of my, of, of me, myself. It's not really what really is with yeah. the other person. Yeah. So that has changed too. It's like really knowing that what I think the other person wants is what I think the other person wants. It's right. not really what the other person wants. So. Right. I, you know, I you, thank you because oh. you just helped. You just helped me see it a little bit clearer. Because, I mean, I think state of mind is is so important, and and it kind of illustrates what you're. I think what you're see what I think you're pointing to, which is <laughs> if I if I think I know how someone else feels, I'm. That, like you said, it's my interpretation of how yeah. I think they feel. It can mm. never, I can never really know how anybody mm. else feels no. because we live in this, you know, thought created reality. We're in this separate, you know, reality created by our interpretation in our thinking. But as, as we build um, rapport and we do things like deep listening and we get more and more free of the contamination of our own thinking, like, mm. you know, like Sid Banks would point to. Um, and, and my thinking is much more in the moment and freer. Mm. My interpretation of what I think you're feeling or thinking is probably going to be more accurate. Mm -hmm. It's still an interpretation, mm -hmm. but I've got less of my story or less of my agenda, less of my stuff I'm putting onto you or onto the relationship. And, mm -hmm. and I'm more in the moment. And I think that's the beauty of the kind of coaching that we both do is, you know, that, that, getting free of the stories that we're experiencing and just being in the moment with a client is um, that's real service mm -hmm. because it's not coming with our own, our own agendas. Mm -hmm. um, 
and and think for nurses and social workers and you know other people you know in the caring professions that's a major way that burnout can be um can be i don't know if avoided is completely possible but um we would take on less of that burden yeah and you know what what i feel also um is kind of important is to see that wanting to know what the other person feels in order to react perfectly or like uh, to help the other one is can mm. also come from a place of wanting to control the outside world controlling the other people's behavior controlling what what other people are feeling. changing that changing of course changing th this for good but it's still a desire a wanting to control yeah and to know that i there's no point to control everybody else or like <laughs> it's not necessary to do so for my own well-being mm -hmm. i'm safe i'm like i'm so safe mm -hmm. and the other person too even if they feel pain even if they feel sadness whatever whatever is going yeah. on it's still okay yeah yeah and that that feeling of safety i think is so important mm. yeah and i think also i mean this 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 um to try to control other people's feelings is also it's like future you you can't do it it's impossible it's like you can can stand on your head it will never <laughs> never <laughs> it, it's just something like if you can like influence something it's it's just momentary it's nothing lasting nothing that this people's life will change in any way because they are in they're in charge for their lives and i'm in charge for my life yeah yeah and and in a better state of mind that's that's good news that's great it's freedom right <laughs> yeah complete freedom yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great well Thank you. I this has been so great, and and already I know that your quote in my book. I, we make such a great team. Um, <laughs> already <laughs> yeah. inspiring people. Thank you. You know, I've already mm. had people posting and and messaging me, and and how inspiring this is, and it's really you know setting them free from the ideas that they thought they had to either had to take on other people's stuff or mm. they were burdened by it, and just seeing that it's we're just thinking that we are. And and as we know, thought is always moving and that can pass on. Mm -hmm. And then we're back to the moment and fresh and new is is always available. So yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that quote and giving me permission to put it in the book. Yeah, thank you for, for taking it. I mean it's <laughs> awesome. And I love you, Buka. Anyway. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. Mm. Anyway, it's nice to see okay. you. Take care. Thank you too. Bye. Bye.